Welcome back to another spoiler-free anime review. Tokyo Revengers follows the life of 26-year-old Takamichi, who by his own admission is a pathetic virgin who peaked in middle school. In episode 1, Takamichi learns of his middle school girlfriend Hinata's death in a car accident where authorities suspect foul play at the hands of the infamous Tokyo Manji Gang. Subsequently, Takamichi is hit by a train and taken back 12 years into the past. While I'm just as tired of this trope as you probably are, criticizing this would be hating it for what it is, which isn't a valid criticism, but believe me, there's plenty of room for that to come later in this review. Upon realizing Takamichi had been given a second chance in life, he decides to correct the biggest mistake of the past 12 years, which apparently is saving the life of a girl he once dated. I understand if she still means a lot to him, so I won't trivialize his love, even though it's been over a decade, it's just that his methods for achieving this are a little strange. Instead of using the power of hindsight to make money and buying himself out of this situation or even doing good in school and convincing Hinata to elope with him in another part of Japan, he decides to double down on the path of the delinquent. He thinks that if he can stop the one bad person in this massive gang of hoodlums, the world would be a better place. I don't know about you, but this sounds like some twisted Walter White, I did it for me logic. Takamichi apparently was looking for any excuse to become a bad boy because this feels more self-indulgent than anything else. The only problem is that Takamichi is the biggest poser and only gains credibility through being a punching bag and offering emotional support. You'd think a 26-year-old would know of a few ways to outsmart a teenager, but instead, he just lets everybody mess his face up. Thankfully, the anime makes room for more personality types than the Japanese teenagers who are somehow martial arts experts by including a few cunning personalities who manipulate those around them. Unfortunately, Takamichi isn't that type of anti-hero because that would have made the anime so much more enjoyable. I'd love to see an anime about someone using strategy and manipulation to climb the ranks of a gang. It could be the proper sanctuary adaptation that we never got. Put Light Yagami or Lelouch V Britannica in Takamichi's position and see what happens. The reason why I say Takamichi is practically interchangeable with any other anime character is because he remains a blank slate through the entire first season. All we ever learn about him is that he's got a good heart, can take a beating, his love for Hinata, and he's got a job at a video rental store. We don't learn anything else about him. Where were his parents during this entire time? Were there any significant life-altering situations or traumas that caused him to want to be a delinquent in the first place? For an anime about an adult struggling to cope with his life choices and grieving the loss of the one girl he loved, he sure lacks personality. Fortunately, the side characters receive much more development as they ultimately became the singular reason why I continued watching. Some Tokyo Manji members receive backstories depicting their troubled lives in a way that makes their choices and personalities feel believable for the viewers. The anime also includes several well-animated and exciting brawls with countless gang members. I found these to be consistently enjoyable, with the exception of selectively choosing when an injury would matter. For example, a character will get stabbed through the hand or beat over the head relentlessly with a steel pipe with no long-term complications. That's not to say the anime imposes no threat on its characters, because a few of them, even ones that we have backstories for, get killed off. It's just that sometimes you would think there would be nerve damage, concussions, or even death from some of the way these characters are beat down, and there's just not. Earlier I mentioned that Takamichi could have made a ton of money and just bought his way out of the situation. This may sound unrealistic considering he knew nothing of stocks or making money as an adult. However, his time traveling ability works both ways and he knows how to control it. He could have quickly become a millionaire. Other than this, I think the time traveling could have been handled worse. I mean, he goes back and forth realizing his mistakes and gathering information, which is nice, but he spends most of the time in the past making the present feel trivial. I don't know about you, but by the halfway point, I didn't care if he saved Hinata or not because I couldn't care any less about either of them. In my opinion, Tokyo Revengers is one of those isekai that would have been better if it weren't an isekai. I think the story would have been so much more enjoyable if it didn't include time traveling, Takamichi or Hinata at all. Just give me the thugs beating the snot out of each other while a few of them are manipulating their way to the top and I'll have a good time. 
Of course, I have to admit my criticism should be taken with a grain of salt as this 24 episode anime is only the first part of its overarching story. The manga has more than 20 volumes currently. Future seasons may further flesh out Takamichi and deepen the connection with Hinata or possibly depict more of a strategic approach from our hero. Despite my criticisms, my overall opinions on Tokyo Revengers are fairly positive. I look forward to the following seasons out of interest in its side characters and seeing how the antagonist will continue to manipulate people. Overall, I give Tokyo Revengers a 7 out of 10. Unlike Takamichi, I don't know what the future holds, but I'd say having a successful second season will be pivotal in shaping the reputation of the first since it doesn't quite stand on its own yet. Additionally, the anime ends on a thrilling note that will leave you begging for another episode, so take that into account before beginning the first season. Personally, I'd recommend waiting until season 2 is at least announced before beginning. I also enjoyed watching Revengers with the English dub, as I thought they did a great job. So what did you think of Tokyo Revengers? Share your thoughts and your predictions in the comments section below. Just remember, no spoilers unless you leave a spoiler warning because I don't want to ruin anyone's experience. Thanks to Neachan for third tier Patreon support and to all of those who support these videos with monthly Patreon donations or buying anime or manga through my affiliate links in the video description. Thanks for watching, I'll see you tomorrow with my review of both seasons for Honey and Clover.